Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. I want to I want to go through some things um, and I want to talk about invisible instructions. So can you guys just just uh, think about invisible instructions or silent instructions? Invisible instructions or silent instructions are instructions that we are giving that we are giving because all aspects of us are always listening. And so let me ask you, what's the silent instruction you give? when you think I've got to solve this, right? What's the invisible instruction that is given? And I think it's very important for us to notice the silent and invisible commands and instructions that we're giving to ourselves based on what it is we're doing. It, it's really important. Uh, it's really important to get this because you can't escape you. And therefore, since you can't escape you, the invisible instructions are very important. They're just as important because you're reinforcing them with your actions. So for example, if you if your intent is, there's something wrong with me, I need to go do that meditation. I need to do that meditation to fix myself. Tell me, new people, new people, what's the invisible or silent instruction that every time you sit down and do that meditation, what are you giving yourself? I, there's something wrong with me, so I'm going to go do that meditation. And every time I do that meditation, what am I telling myself? Yeah. So as powerful as that meditation is, you re that the action is reinforcing that there's something you must fix, something wrong, something incomplete. So what did we do to, to create this huge shift? You know, like Dean was blind for 20 years. I met him. He had you know, big black glasses. Love, just, just love him. Love the shift he's made. What did we have him focus on? I never, ever, 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 ever let him focus on, hey, I've got to fix myself. He's lost like 20 pounds and living a great life, but I never let him focus on, hey, I've got this problem, let's fix it. Instead, what do we focus on? Let's create a life we love, a life I love. Let's create um, health and vitality. Let's create a life I love. Let's create to live my true nature and purpose now you tell me okay just just put just can someone type those in for me a life i love health and vitality true nature and purpose true nature and purpose i know my scribbles kiara laughs at me she goes oh first time i saw you with your scribbles i go does does he realize no one can read them <laughs> yeah i realize <laughs> <laughs> And so here's, here's what's interesting, right? Is if you tune in to create a life I love, and every time you get on one of our meditations, I'm creating a life I love. Where's the attention? Where's your focus? It's just on that, right? If, you, if you're tuning into I'm creating healthy body, it's just on that. It's just on the creation. True nature and purpose is just on the creation. You see, do you see that? It's just a focus on the creation. It's not focused on the lack. It's not focused on the not. It's not, it's not focused on the incompleteness. It is the biggest single shift. It is so simple though, but it is so big and it is the hardest thing for, for most. Whenever I do coaching with people, 90% of the time, it's just getting their focus on the right things. Does this make sense? Give me a yes if it does. It's just getting people's focus in the right place. If you put people's focus on, I have a healthy body, their body follows the instructions. And you can't tell me just because you've got a diagnosis that your body's unhealthy. No, it's not. Look at your, you know, your, your nose works, your teeth work, your saliva works, your tongue works, your lungs work. There's so much. I don't think people are ever more than 5% unhealthy. So you can choose to be healthy and vital. You're mostly healthy and vital. You're here. So you choose it. You're in it. You're in that reality. And you're sending those instructions. That's why we move it fast. And so it's very different. When we, when we create, we tune into that point B. We say, that's my end result. And then we say, cool, but I'm here. This is my current 
reality. And we create a tension structure like a rubber band that is going to resolve that way. That is going to resolve that way, you see. There he is himself, Mr. 3.0. Dean, I've been talking about you nonstop. Current reality, end result. That's the way it's going to resolve. Now, is the current reality any better or worse than the end result? The answer is no, because this must equal this. This identity must equal this identity. And this is where people can sometimes get themselves confused. They can get themselves confused because the only reason that there's any resistance is when you think you will change because of a result. The only reason that there's any resistance to what it is you're creating is because you've made it personal. You think it's going to change you. And this is, this is when we get into the magnetic moment and when manifestation happens fast is when you simply be it so that you can see it. You cannot plant seeds of I need to be fixed and become fixed. You cannot plant seeds of I'm not good enough to try to create good enough or I'm scarce to create abundance. You, there, there's simply a mismatch. And, and this is what we've really got to understand is that we're creating and creators are over here and problem solvers are over here and they're two different worlds. And what I mean by problem solvers is people who are trying to resolve their identity by creating versus people over here are just creating. So here's what I want to let you know. You are not your body. You are not your, you're not your money. You're not your kids. You're not your relationships. You're not your family. You're not your career. You're not your education. You're not any of that. You're none of that. There is nothing you can do to be more or less validated as a human being. And it's very interesting to think about that. In society, if we put two individuals next to each other, one woman, she cured someone else of cancer. The other woman, she had the cancer that got cured. In society, which one do we praise more? The one that cured the cancer, true? We say, well, you must, you've done more. So we say, you, you had the cancer and then you got to you, you cooler, you better, you're a better human, true? You're more validated. Your life has been better off. You've, you've done something better with it. See, the truth is, though, when you get to the end of the day, they're just two humans, just two people. Who knows what's better? There is no better, you see? And it's that structure. It's that making it personal. It's that I will be better if and I will be worse if that creates this identity conflict that is, uh, is just so real. It's just so real. And the worst thing is, is really well-meaning personal development instructors and teachers, really well-meaning, completely do not communicate this, even if they probably know it. They don't. They say, if you have something wrong, come and do this. Is it true? If your life's not the way you want it, come and do this. But you know what? Sometimes it's sneaky. Sometimes they say, you want your life to be better. But however, whenever you say, I want my life to be better, what are you really saying? Now it's not enough. Is it true? And they don't mean it. But what they do is any instruction based in that structure reinforces. Any action based in that structure reinforces with the silent and invisible instructions to all aspects of your ego based on your focus. True. As soon as you're in that structure, any action you do in that structure reinforces it. Right? So you're in that structure. I've got to fix myself. I've got to make life better. You read books. You go to courses. You do this. You go to that. You do all these things. But you're still in the same structure. So it doesn't even matter if you do the right behavior. You're in the wrong structure. You see? It, it, as soon as you're in the wrong structure, game over. And the wrong structure is trying to resolve who you've been, trying to fix yourself, thinking that the future will be better. Hey, Beth, I think you can hit and rename your name. Don't know if that will work for you, but I, I can figure it out. Does, does this make sense? <laughs> Dean just typed in, I had to buy a mouse this week. Um, I've only been using a keyboard for the last 20 years. That's cool, man. It's so cool. Dude, I still... I love that you got your site back. I love it. 
It's a red mouse. <laughs> You're so awesome, man. And that's it. It's just a new structure. It doesn't matter what you do in the wrong structure. You're reinforcing the, the old pattern. It is amazing, Dean. And I couldn't be more grateful, man. Just I love you, man. I love you. You, you, you are adding to what's possible for everyone else in this work, our work. And then we just get to say, you know what? We had a man who was blind. He can now see within three months because of the super conscious magic. And that's going to change lives. You, you're going to change lives with your testimony. And I, you blow me away. Structure. Structure. <laughs> Stop it, Dean. We're just going to keep talking. In. <laughs> just get, you're amazing, brother. I just walked to the shops on my own again. You're freaking amazing, dude. <sighs> yeah. Magic, man. Structure is magic. Ah, oh, no, don't be sorry, brother. I think you and I could just start thinking how fucking amazing it is. Um, oh, Dean, you're amazing, bro. <laughs> and so, so the idea, and this was what really got me caught. I got caught with all of my teachers with beautiful methods and processes, getting, getting myself just thinking I had to fix myself. And look, the, the super conscious connection is great. The recode is amazing. But I tell you the secret of the secrets. You guys want to know the secrets. The reason why I get, we get huge transformations is 80% is because of structure, 20% because of super conscious. Promise. It's structural first. Until you get into a structure that's going to actually be able to resolve itself, to actually be able to move without oscillating, it doesn't matter how good your method is because you just reinforce the old way. Does that make sense? But people think because the sizzle on the steak looks so cool on my YouTube session, they think that it's the sizzle. But I promise you, the steak is the structure. It's what really matters. It's what's going to fill you up. It's what's going to actually create the dinner. Sizzle looks good, but I promise you, structure, structure, structure. You must get into a creative structure. However, most people are not in a creative structure. So let's just answer the question, what is structure? Okay, a structure, maybe someone will type this in. A structure is, a, it is made up of parts, different parts working together. A structure is maybe is, is made up of parts working together. Does that make sense? Different aspects, different parts, different things that are connected and working together. So I'm in a structure right now called my home. Okay. And all these pieces of wood are all working together with glass. And that structure is held. And it's held together with certain tension. There will be nails. There will be things slotted in, different tensions. It's all held together in a structure, okay? Now, that structure doesn't move with the amount of pressure put on the outside right now, but I'm sure I could get a big enough uh, piece of machinery and I could run through it. Makes sense, but it's a structure. Now, other structures, okay, like a, a rocking chair, is made up of the same thing that my house is made up of. You see? It's made up of wood, screws, nails, but the rocking chair does a different thing completely. Does this make sense? You get a baseball bat. Again, it's made up of the same stuff, but it's structured differently. It does different things. So, so what's interesting is when I talk about structure, you can be the same. See, ice, water, steam, same thing, different structure. Okay. And so structure is things working together. So your the way that you orientate your life is a structure. All your relationships are a structure and they're held together by certain tensions, sexual tensions, chemistry, different tensions. Tension is just the, the force between two parts in the structure. Does that make sense? And my body is a structure held together. So, so when I talk about structure, there, there are different ways that a structure can work, okay? Some structures are stuck. Can everyone write that in? Stuck. Some of you have got stuck structures. It's like uh, you, you, your structure of your goals is like a skyscraper. They're not moving, right? Some, some of our structures, some of our goals are stuck. They're not moving at all, Okay. Yeah, Kelly says, so water, for example, temp temperature is the tension. 
Yeah, it's temperature is the tension. So you, you have cold water, you put it in a freezer, uh, the temperature changes the water because the tension seeks resolution to turn into ice. Take that ice, put it outside the freezer, and then the tension with the temperature will turn it back to water. So some structures are stuck, okay? Now, some structures are flowing. So the, the river that's out here, okay, the river, so that's out there, it's flowing. Make sense? It's flowing. So some structures can flow and they can move. See, if I kick a ball, it just moves. You want your goals just to move. So you just want them just to be able to move. Well, I just want to go there. But then some structures oscillate, okay? Like a pendulum oscillates. So you know, so stuck, flowing, oscillating. Stuck, flowing, oscillating. Three different types of structures, stuck, oscillating, and flowing, okay? Uh, stationary, you could say, stationary, um, pendulum-like for oscillating, okay? Or flowing, like a river, like a car. Now, the river, even though it's flowing, it will only flow in a certain way because there's more structure there. Okay, so it will flow, but it will flow based on the slope, based on tides, based on gravity, but also based on the riverbanks. Okay, based on the riverbanks. The, the, the structure that holds the water will only let it flow in a certain way. Okay. And so wherever your focus is, I want you to get this, wherever your focus is determines your structure. Your focus determines your structure. Hmm. Your focus determines your structure. That's big. I see two worlds. I see one world and their focus equals their identity. Okay, and then I see another world, which is the focus on creating what they love. Okay, so let's talk about the identity focus. You know you're in an identity focus you know you're in an identity focus if failure is bad. You know you're in an identity focus if success is good, better. How do I know? See, the only reason that failure is a problem is because it means something about you. In other words, it means that you're not good enough. You're not capable. You're not significant. You did something wrong. Does that make sense? So if you're worried about an outcome, also known as fear of failure, fear of an outcome, you, you're in an identity focus, what it means to me. Also, if you think that a future will be better than the now, well, it will be better then, you're, you're focusing on your identity and trying to resolve ways you feel incomplete. You see? Now, 99% of the world is in an identity focus. How do I know? Because they're not all just creating what they love. Instead, they're going for this because it's safe, which really says, so I don't fail and look bad. They're going for this because they don't have status. Going for this because I want to change people's lives. You see that? And that causes all the resistance because you're giving the power away. This is very different to just creating. Creating is not about your identity and it is not personal. You can just create health. You can just create great relationships. You can, but it's not about you. You stay the same. 
See, the identity focus says, if I do this, then life will be better. If I don't do this, then it will be bad. And therefore, I'm better or I'm worse. Does that make sense? The identity focus is focused on resolving ways they feel incomplete by designing end results to resolve that in an attempt to, to try to do that. The identity focus always creates oscillation. The identity focus says my identity is that right now in the current reality, it's not current reality is not good enough. How do I know that most people live in a reality of not good enough? Here's how I know, because they create desired results that are better. You see that? Where in society have you heard this? Life will be better when? If you just make more money, if you just do this, if you just had less fat on your body, if you just drove a better car, if you just had a better education, if you just served more people, if you just wrote that best selling book, if you just, it will be better, you'll be better, you'll be more validated, you'll be more important, successful, sexy, other people will love you, you'll just, it will just be better. What's the silent instruction when you say it will be better if I was healthy? It will be, what's the silent instruction? The silent instruction is that if it will be better, then you have to hold on to the other end of the stick is that the now is not enough. You see? And so this becomes you. So your identity becomes it's not enough. Or I'm not worthy. So what happens? Because that's current reality, that's your identity. That's where all your safety is. So as you move towards this, at some point, your identity kicks in. Okay. As you're moving this way to this better future, your identity kicks in and says, hey, if you actually achieve the love, the money or the health, if you actually achieve this, well, then I'll have to die. So I'm not going to let you actually achieve it. I'm going to create something to pull you back. Does this make sense, everyone? And what is that something that pulls you back? Well, it could be a bad business decision, a health crisis. It could be a kid making bad decisions. It could be whatever, but it will pull you back to stay in alignment with yours and your family's identity because your focus has been trying to fix that. So who knows the structure? Now I know some of you go, Chris, I've heard this brother. I don't think you can ever hear this enough until you're completely living in the right structure. I don't mind how many times I need to say it until you're in the right structure, until you get into the new structure, you will just be reinforcing through invisible and silent instructions that you're not enough. And any action, no matter how good it sounds, in the old structure, is just reinforcing that you must fix or improve, that you're not enough, that you're not worthy. It simply is the wrong focus, and that focus leads to oscillation. This is like a pendulum. You go forward a bit, back a bit, forward a bit, back a bit. Now, sometimes the forwards and back can be years. It can be years, it can be days, it can be months, it can be decades, but you oscillate forward and back, forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. That is the structure of society. How many times do we have to hear there's going to be the end of the world, there's a recession, forward and back. We never can just get there. It's never just finding peace. Guys, I want you to hear this. This is the sickness we live in. 
We've got more than enough to stop having to go to work. We've got more than enough to not worry about abundance. We, we don't need to keep on having these oscillations. Oh, we've got, we got a bit of peace. We're getting some peace. Oh, but now we need a bit of war. We're getting peace. We're getting war. War on drugs. War on terror. War on... It's oscillation. The pendulum. The pendulum's there. And so it's everywhere, true. And so it's, it's not the other uh, method's fault. They simply do not understand structure. They simply don't understand that any time you're in a place where the future will be better, and the now's not enough, and if it's better, what does that mean about you? They simply don't realize that the focus on identity is the biggest problem. You see, this is what those people in the circle with Lynn McTaggart did. They focus on the person in the middle we will heal you. We basically, they had eight people say, you are broken. So what's the, what's the other one here? But by, by the way, who's enjoying this? Who's getting something out of it? Hope the new people are. Where are my new people? Hope the new people are. So I want you to get this. Success is not personal. Failure is not personal. It's structural. If you are in a structure like a river flowing this way, and the river says broke, have money, broke, have money, but over here is abundance, the water in the river can't just jump out and go over there. Doesn't matter how much work this person does on themselves, how motivated they are, they're simply in the wrong structure. You know, just simply in the wrong structure. It will just keep flowing the other way. Okay. And this is very important. See, you just get into the right structure, give the right invisible instructions, and everything just lines up so fast. So if you have a focus on your identity, you're focusing on how it's not enough and, and that it'll be better in the future, okay? And this is completely, completely wrong. It will leave you oscillating and it won't work. Instead, we just focus on creating what we love, knowing it won't change us. We're already enough. I want you to type this in, write it down, own it. I can have anything I want and stay exactly the same. I can have anything I want and stay exactly the same because it's not about me. Kim says, how come the right structure is so hard? One, it's invisible. Two, no one's telling you about it. Three, it, our society is stuck in this structure. And by the way, not every society on the planet has this structure. You go to Fiji, they don't live for this future that's so better. They don't. They're just creating life. I can have anything and everything that I want, and I stay the same. In fact, one of the most disappointing things to the old structure is that you will arrive at millions of dollars with the exact same problems. <laughs> You won't, it won't, it won't change it. You're still going to be you. <laughs> you still, you know, you, you know, I, it's just, it's just, you will be you. Anytime you think that you will change because of it, your ego is going to fight it because it doesn't want to change. As soon as you accept, you're going to be the exact same with the love of your life as you are when you're single that you're going to be the exact same when you're healthy and versus when you're sick, exact same. When you realize that truth that you can be it now, you stop giving your power away to success and failure and reinforcing that you're not it. And you simply, you simply have it. There's no resistance if it's not personal. There's no resistance if it's not personal.
So how do we choose the structure? How do we choose the structure? We simply choose to go for what we love, to have what we love, and to know that there's only one reason to go for anything. And that's because it's just what you would love to create. It won't change you. It won't make life better. You're just going to create it. You're not better if you have a million dollars or if you have one dollar. You're just different, different reality. Sorry, you're not different. It's just a different reality. If you can't find abundance in a, a seven dollar bottle of wine and a, and a picnic at the beach with your favorite person in the world, you will never find abundance in a eight hundred dollar dinner for two with a $600 bottle of champagne and, uh, and tablecloths. You just, you just simply won't. If you can't enjoy driving your beat up car, you, you're not going to find the joy driving the, the, the next Ferrari or Mercedes. You simply must get into a different structure where you understand you have and can have it all now. And then you just create and so if you choose to create a healthy body, it's not better than having what you've decided is an unhealthy body. True. There's simply no reason to not have it now. So here's the premise. Stop being in a structure where this thing here will give you that. Stop being a structure where the future will be better than now. Have it now. Have it now. Have it now and create whatever you desire. And it'll be exactly the same. You arrive before. Our question is, is how does that apply to, to physical pain? Well, the first thing is that there's nothing wrong with physical pain. Physical pain is simply just a message. See, do you see the decisions that have been put behind it? Makes sense. So what would you choose? What are you going to choose to create? See, the physical pain is there to, to from the identity to create a protection mechanism to pull us back, you see. And so when we realize that we're a predominant creative force in our life, we understand we created that pain about to stop us to do something that needs that needs to be here. Yeah, so, so we go, hey, I'm going to choose to have a life I love. Cool, what's in the way? This physical pain. What's the physical pain about? All right, oh, that's in my way. Okay, cool. That's interesting. What's that? Let's do a Rico. Let's figure out what's going on. Why have I got that? What's the obvious action move towards things? And so, so th there's nothing wrong with getting better at things. You can choose an end result of getting better at things. That's different than you will be better. You see, I can choose to become a better public speaker, a better artist, a better at these different skills, but doesn't make me a better human. Can everyone give me a yes for the distinction there? I can still choose to evolve and improve and get good at things, but it doesn't change that I'm better. I'm still Chris, right? I'm still Chris. I'm still me. You're still going to do it. And so you get to arrive now. There's no reason to not have abundance and joy and love and everything now. But here's the thing. you got to get in the right structure first. If you don't get in the right structure first, everything you do re reinforces the old structure, which keeps you trapped, which is exactly why you see people 30 years into their spiritual journey still learning the basics. And I love them, right? I love them. They go, Chris, I've been in personal development since the 60s. And I'm like, Brilliant. I'm glad we're here now because now we can start reinforcing that you need to fix it. We just need a new structure. You know, I don't know why this work wasn't out here before. I don't know why this awareness isn't there. Don't I, I don't know why. I just know that this is the truth because we see it. People say, Chris, I've been seeking knowledge for 20 years. I've gone to this course and this course and this course, this course. And I go, all those courses are freaking amazing. But they're all standing on a foundation of needing to fix or improve or that the now is not good enough. And that will always result in oscillation. It will always result in oscillation. 
There's no other way. It's structural. And structure has integrity. You see? Structure has integrity. <laughs> the structure is there. So you go, now is not enough or future is better and I'm going to fix it. This structure, this is the thing you're trying to fix. By the nature of structure, by the nature of the universe, you said, I'm trying to get away from this and trying to get here. You are locked in between these two points. It's not until you're not trying to get away from anything or trying to get to, to anything. You step through the wizard's gate, you have it now, and then you're simply just choosing magic, choosing what you want. You're in the fastest. Uh, someone said, well, what's the fastest way to change the structure? Well, we're in it. We're in it. We're here. Awareness, understanding. So let's do it. There's four orientational choices. These four orientational choices uh, must we must step into before anything else. But who's enjoying today? Okay, so there's four orientational choices we must get into. Okay. These must happen before we, we step into magic. Okay, the first one, type it in. I create a life I love. I create a life I have. I choose the end result of a life I love. I choose a life I love. Now, a lot of you will have resistance to just that, right? Chris, I can't have a life I love because of, I've got to solve all these problems. So if that's the first one, you start just working on just that one choice, okay? I choose a life I love, you see? Until you love your life now. Okay, here's the next one. I choose health and vitality. I choose health and vitality. That's the second choice. You can have it now. Second choice now. Nearly every single person I've talked to, even if they have a big diagnosis, they can, they can choose and experience so much health right now. So much. So much. Okay, number three. Uh, I choose to live my true nature and purpose. I choose to live my true nature and purpose. Number four, I choose to be predominant creative force in my life. <laughs> Dean bit me to it. See, so th those four choices, I choose to be the predominant creative force in my life. I choose to be healthy and vital. Uh, I choose to live my true nature and purpose, and I choose to love my life. There's no, there's no um identity in that you're just choosing those four things and they create your new structure once you've got no resistance to those four you're in the magnetic moment and you're simply able to create fast see too often we feel like we need to to get into these others that try to oh i, I need to, i'm going to go create money why i'm going to go create this why because I'm not enough without it. Unfortunately, people who tell you that are only telling you that because they make money by telling you that. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. In fact, something that really bugs me when it comes to money, I have never met anyone, anyone who tells me that I need to activate my 5D um, abundance codes. I've never met anyone who says that who isn't selling a program to do that. Just haven't. They piss me off. I got a lot, I, I make a lot of money. Uh, this month we did just under $700,000. I make a lot of money. Cool. But the truth is money is a measurement. It's structural. Money measures value delivered to other human beings in the way they want to pay for it. That's it. There's no code to activate a measurement structure. There's a simple structure to bringing it. Just like time, right on, Dean. Just like time. Money is a measurement of value given to other human beings in a way they want to pay for it. And so, unfortunately, the, the, uh, the world that uh, a lot of us get um, force-fed by, by really well-meaning but misguided people, it, it takes a, quite a lot of unlearning, to be honest with you. Who agrees with that? Like, I mean, who before you met me, who heard of that's the structure of money? right? I heard this from a billionaire mentor. That is the structure of money. There's no, you don't activate something in you that's a measurement. You don't activate a kilometer or a mile in you, do you? You don't activate that. And, and so it, it's, um, it feels to me sometimes like 
um, one of the one of my jobs here to help all of you is to is to get in here and actually help you understand some some real structures. Like I see, I see really, I guess, well-meaning quotes, and um, they they do get it wrong. Let me just share one that most of us think is true, but is really misguided. You ready for it? Give me a yes if you're ready for it. It's going to be kind of big. Might be shocking to some of you. Okay, here it is. And I'm sorry for the bluntness today. It's just how I'm just how I am today. If you think you can and think you can't, you're right. We've all heard this before. If you think you can, think you can't, you're right. That that is one of the most hurtful statements. I'll tell you why. Let me ask you. How many times have you thought you couldn't do something and then you're able to? How many times have you thought that you could do something and you couldn't? <laughs> True. So what the statement should be saying is if you take action, move through failure, focus on your end result and keep going, then you'll get there. You see? And, and I think Henry Ford believed his same. I think that's who said it. Guys, I'm not saying that I didn't, I didn't say these quotes. You probably go back on my Facebook. I probably got them out there. I didn't know better, right? We just thought, oh, well, that's what Tony Robbins says. Well, that's what this person says. Go, all right. Even in, you know, Anthony, I love him. He changed my life. But he does a whole process on his, his weekend where you focus on how bad your life will be if you, if you turn out a certain way. <laughs> True. Who's done that process? <laughs> what a ridiculous idea that is, as if that's needed. So, so my point is, is just to really understand that it's not your fault. The structure is li literally just around us and it's misguided. And I think one of the things that comes through me is just this, this real sharpness, crit critical thinking of just like this, this, this truth to say, you know what, that got us to here. Now we've got to go to the next level because you know, you know, statements like that, none of us, who, who's heard that statement before, never questioned it, eh? You know, never questioned, oh, I think you can't, think you can't, you're right. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a true statement. Yeah, that's true. But you know what, you know the problem it does? You go, Chris, come on, man, that, it doesn't cause problems, dude. Why, you know, don't be so critical. Someone's putting a nice quote on their wall. Well, here's the problem. It leads you down a idea that if you're not thinking you can, well, then you're screwed. So then you, you go to do something. Well, I don't think I can. Well, I better work on that belief. Can you see that? Right? Oh, I don't think I can. And if you think you can, think you can't, then you're right. And I don't think I can. So I better go to Hopoono or hypnosis or NLP and convince myself that I can. Does this make sense? So, so can, you, can you see how the, the little thing then once pulled on can, can take you into this, this thing? And it's just, it's just misguided. And, I, and I, it, just, it just bugs me. <laughs> It just bugs me because once you see it, you can't unsee it. Once you hear it, you go, ah, oh, what's the invisible instruction that I'm giving from that? True. What's the invisible instruction? Well, I got to fix myself. I got to have the right beliefs. You know, if you look at the truly uh, successful people, a lot of times they didn't believe that they could. They didn't believe that they could. Here's a, here's a real amazing story. In uh, Sydney, Australia, there's the Sydney Opera House. Most of you will either know it or seen it. It's a really interesting building. Well, it was, it was built in the 60s, I believe, and was supposed to be $7 million. It ended up being over 100 and something million dollars to build that thing. And they had to, all sorts of things went wrong, complete failure. And, uh, but they just, you know, they, they, just, they just did it, you know, they just went for it. They, they just made it happen. And so I'm sure at times they probably thought that they can't, you know, the, the 15 times more expensive. I'm sure they thought they can't. And if they had that little saying ringing in their head, they wouldn't have just followed through and created something that's amazing. All right. They would have had to go off and, uh, and, and, and get their thinking right. I mean, while I'm on this, <laughs> while I'm on this, there's a lot, there's a lot of these things uh, that, uh, that, <laughs> that I see uh, out there. You know, one that, another one is, you know, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. It's like, no, it's not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I do lots of things different, you know. What they are trying to say is, is, is positive, but it, it, it just, you know, I've seen another one recently. It said, uh, even if, and this was by a really, really, really famous guy. And he goes, you know, uh, even if you're going slow, at least you're ahead of other people. Right? If you're going slow, at least you're ahead of other people. 
It's like, what the heck do other people have to do in what you're creating? You know, the whole premise is, is my success is based on other people. All right. Interesting stuff. Anyway, so there's a lot of pop psychology out there um, by really, really, really heart-centered, well-intentioned people that I believe carries invisible instructions that actually build um, structures in our minds of needing to problem solve and fix ourselves. Does this make sense? 